So let us do this question right here. 16 to the power of sine squared x plus 16 to the power of cos squared x equals 10. So they want us to solve for x. So I'm going to start off with changing this 16 to 2 to the power of 4 sine squared x plus 2 to the power of 4 cos squared x equals 10. After this, I'm going to change this cos squared to 1 minus sine squared. That's coming from the identity sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. And therefore, cos squared will be 1 minus sine squared by moving the sine squared to the other side. Okay, so we have 2 to the power of 4 sine squared x plus 2 to the power of 4. And I'm going to change this to 1 minus sine squared x equals 10. And I will rewrite this again. But I will distribute the 4 into here. So I get 4 minus 4 sine squared x equals 10. Now we're going to use the exponent law which is x to the power of a over x to the power of b equals x to the a minus b. And here basically the x is two and a is four and the b is four sine squared x. So basically we're gonna go backwards, go from here to here. And I'm gonna have two to the power of four sine squared x plus two to the power of four over two to the power of four sine squared x equals 10. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let u equal Two to the power of four sine squared x. So therefore, this will be u plus two to the four, just sixteen over u equals ten. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to multiply everything by u to get rid of the u on the bottom here. So u times u is u squared plus 16 equals 10 u. I'm gonna move everything to one side, equate it to zero. So this will be u squared minus 10 u plus 16 equals 0. And I will now take this here to the top right here. So again, we had u squared minus 10 u plus 16 equals 0. I will factor this. And this will give me u minus eight, u minus two equals zero. Two numbers multiply to give me positive 16 and add to give me negative 10. They are the negative eight and the negative two. And therefore, u equals eight and two. At this stage, we will go back to what u equals, which is right here.
And instead of u here, we'll go two to the power of four sine squared x equals eight and two to the power of four sine squared x equals two. We're gonna solve this. So I'm just gonna keep this the same and change the eight to two to the power of three. That allows me to cancel the basis and I have four sine squared x equals three. Divide both sides by four by four. I got sine squared x equals three over four. I'm gonna square root both sides. So I'll get sine x when I square root this. And when I square root this, so basically I'm square rooting both sides right here. And that's gonna give me plus or minus square root of three over two. Now we know this here is the special angle triangle of 30, 60, one, two, root three. The angle that has a sine of root three over two, it is the 60 because sine 60 is root three over two. And since the sign is plus or minus, according to all the students, take calculus, then I'm going to have an angle in every quadrant. And of course, since the angle that has a sign of root 3 over 2 is 60, then my reference angle in everywhere here is going to be 60. Okay. So we need to find this angle right here, which is obvious that's 60 because we measured the angles from zero. That's 180 and that's 360. So the first angle X1 is 60. And then this angle here, X2 will be 180 take away 60, because you go all the way to here and take away the reference angle, that would give you 120. Now, when they say solve here, they didn't tell us between solve for x between zero and 360, so they asking for general solution. And for general solution, you know, if you add one to this angle, if you add 180, you're gonna get there. Also to this angle, if you add 180, you're gonna get there. So basically if you go 120 plus 180, it will give you 300, which is this. And also you keep on going around 180s, 180, 180 for general solution. So what you, what you need to say here, just say it's 60 plus N 180, where N is a member of all integers or Z. And here also, it's 120 plus n 180, where n is a member of all integers. We have to do this. We know that's two to the power of one, so I'm just gonna cancel, cancel. And I have four sine squared x equals one, I'm gonna divide both sides by four and I'm gonna get sine squared X equals one quarter. I'm gonna square root both sides. I'm gonna get sine X equals one half. And the angle that has a sine of one half, it's the 30.
Now we square root both sides. And we're going to get sine x. Don't forget, it's going to be a plus or minus. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Now we do the same thing, which is doing the quadrants. 0, 180. 360. Of course, that's 90 and that's 270, but we, we never really use them when we're solving these kind of questions because the reference angle is always between the x-axis and the terminal arms. And since it's a plus and minus, the same kind of situation you're going to have a terminal arm in every quadrant, starting at quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. The angle that has a sine of a half is still is from the 360, 90 triangle. So sine 30 is one half. So therefore, your reference angle here everywhere is going to be 30. Okay. And honestly, and, and like, the question that we did here, we only, for general solution, we only need to find the first one and we need to find the second one. And then you just keep on adding 180 to get all the other solutions. So therefore X1 equals 30. And for general solution, you go plus N 180, where N is a member of all integers. And X2 is gonna be all the way to 180, take away the 30. And it's going to be 150 plus n 180, where n is a member of all integers. And basically, that is the solution to this question. This, this, and maybe what we'll do, we'll just call this x3 and this x4 so that we know that we have all these solutions. Don't forget to hit that like button. Comment if you like, but most importantly, support our channel by subscribing. See you on my next video. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.